just as strange, at least to Western eyes, are the customs and habits of the Asiatic peoples, and especially fascinating and mysterious are the many ancient rituals that still play their part in the life of modern China. So now we fly 6,500 miles west over the Hudson Bay to, well, obviously not China in that direction, but Chinatown, Vancouver. Here we're just in time for one of the biggest Chinese community parades ever staged outside the Orient. More than 20,000 Canadians jammed the streets for this gorgeous spring festival, sponsored by the Chinese Freemasons Centennial Committee, in conjunction with the centennial celebrations of British Columbia. Highlight of the parade was a magnificent golden dragon imported from Hong Kong at a cost of nearly one and a half thousand dollars. Notice the 250-foot-long silken-clad monster coils its way through the streets on human legs. In fact, it was carried by 300 men working in relays. All along the route, the dragon was taunted and goaded by a local St. George. The brave chap. As a matter of interest, in China, this is an important three-day festival and there it's used mainly as an opportunity of instructing the more poorly educated farm workers in the agricultural benefits of spring. In Vancouver, of course, it's entertainment pure and simple. In addition to the big dragon, the dragon, of course, being the emblem of the imperial Manchu dynasty, there are several baby ones. The superstition was that the dragon was responsible for controlling water, rain and drought. Even now, in some remote parts of China, people still put out small offerings to appease the dragons during this festival. Chinese firecrackers, by the way, now an integral part of the parade, were originally used to scare away evil spirits. This part of Vancouver, with its gay and flamboyant street signs and its stores full of exotic and bizarre oriental wares, is in some respects nearer in atmosphere and feeling than any such community in the Western world. Yet strangely enough, the first Chinese, in any numbers, arrived in British Columbia only a hundred years ago. Today, they are a very much respected section of the overall population. When you realize the parade lasted for over three hours, one can begin to sympathize with the dragon, or to give it its proper name, Gim Lung. You can see now why the bearers were obliged to work in relays. This striking symbol of ancient China is finally put away in a city that did not exist until centuries after the imperial Manchus lending a touch of proud history to a comparatively new but future great part of the Western world.